Hi everyone, this is our second lecture, the analysis of waiting for Godot. In the first lecture, we saw Estragon and Vladimir, and we saw that they were waiting on a country road um, with a um, very um, rare um, environment, very kind of um, poor environment. And we saw them talking with each other about many things. We saw that um, there is a certain integration of language um, also, so that they were talking about many topics about which there is very little logical connection. Um, and uh, we saw that they are on that kind of road waiting for Godot. But we saw also everything in the play is shrouded with uncertainty. So they don't know who is Godot and they don't know where they should be waiting him, nor do they know that um the time that they should be waiting for him and also and this is interesting they do not know um godot when they are going to see him and they do not know why they are also waiting for him so um these are the things that we kind of encountered in the first lecture uh, now we are starting from this um page page 13 and Okay, uh, and Estragon and Vladimir continue this um, kind of uninterrupted um, conversation. And uh, we saw that although the language is simple, yet it might sound difficult or it might seem difficult to unfollow um, their speech. Okay, so um, they are speaking about their rights, uh, how they have lost their rights. And always we see that sometimes they um, compare between the present and the past and how they were respectable people in the past, not in the present. Okay, um, another interesting idea that they are now um, raising is um, what um, Estragon is saying, we are not tired, okay. um, we are not. Okay, um, listen, and um, they um, listen, okay. So, um, well, uh, Estragon is saying, I, I hear something and Vladimir says host, Okay, nor I, I don't hear anything. Um, you frightened me, you gave me a fright. As I was saying, I, I thought it was he, what, got off, but the wind uh, in the lead. So um, since there was a wind blowing and um, Vladimir like um, was terrified because um, he thought that um, the sound is uh, belonging to God and that he is coming. Okay, so I could have sworn I heard shouts. Okay, and the dragon says, Why should Godo shout when, when he's coming? Okay, well, at his horse. Okay, well, um, Estragon um, poses another thing. He says, I have, I am hungry, and you see, uh, Vladimir is offering him um, a carrot. Okay, so do you want a carrot? So, and, and he gives him that carrot, and this is kind of consistent with what we have seen about these characters. Like, you remember we said that Estragon is always concerned about his bodily needs and he is always um, immersed in his, um, in, in, in satisfying the needs of his body. Well, we said Vladimir is, is more of a thinking sort of person. So um, he is hungry and it is uh, always Vladimir who is taking care of Estragon as Vladimir is like the smartest uh, among the two. Okay, so he gives him a carrot and, um, well, uh, and, and the, uh, Estragon is asking if, if this is the only thing there. And Vladimir says, I might have a turnip, but not. Okay, uh, well, um, so they, they also differ whether it was a carrot or, or a turnip. And you see that um, every simple thing they kind of try to differ, they try to discuss. Um, all the things that we find trivial, but we find not interesting enough to engage in a conversation about, they always try to magnify over these things. Okay, so um, Estragon, uh, I asked you a question. Okay, did you reply, how, uh, how is the carrot? Okay, um, it's a carrot. Okay, so you see the tautology in that, like um, it is adding no um, information like, uh, a carrot, of course, is a carrot. So um, the answer of, of Estragon is not adding any information. And you remember also he said that language is disintegrated. Like we always expect in a conversation like um, people speaking 
and they might raise a question and we are expecting from the other side to answer this question, but here um, it is not. So you remember um, Mr. Rigan was asking about are we tired and so on and um, Vladimir did not answer that question and then they turned to another topic about the carrots and turnips and so on and now um, Mr. Rigan is is repeating the question um, uh, repeat and, and he says that he did not get an answer and instead of answering him Vladimir um, answers with another question about how, how is the card okay so um, okay so uh, much the better um, and this are gonna have forgotten that's what annoys me I I'll never forget on um, this card ah uh, yes now I remember okay so um, forgetting our remembrance is another thing that we are going to um, speak about uh, later on there's much in the play that about um, forgetting because forgetting is related to uh, memory and memory is related to time and time is related to waiting so that's why it is very much relevant in the play okay, so Vladimir well uh, we are not tight so you see he returns to, to the same question okay I don't hear a word that you are saying I'm asking you if we are tied tied tie it okay what do you mean by tied down we are tied down okay so um uh, but to whom by whom to your man to godot so um to tie it to godot what an idea no question of it okay for the moment so um this is a very significant um idea the idea that they are being tied and um Later on, we are going to see somebody else who is tied, uh, and that one is lucky who is tied by a rope to uh, that, that is um, caught by by Pozzo. Um, and we are going to see that people are tied sometimes with a material rope, literally tied like lucky, and sometimes they are tied with um, an immaterial uh, rope. Um, they are psychologically tied, that's to say. So. Um, um, the idea of being tied is also related to the idea of freedom and, and this is something that is um, related to existentialism as we um, are going to see so um, the question are we tied is very significant Vladimir and instead of dismissing the question he kind of welcomes it as um, kind of a brilliant idea okay his name is, is Godot okay I think so well, fancy that. Okay, funny. The more you eat, the worse it gets. With me, it's just the opposite. So, um, this is some another difference between Vladimir and Sigurdan. That with Vladimir, the most he eats, the worse it gets. Well, sort of for um, Sigurdan, the more he eats, the worse it gets. Well, with Vladimir, it is the opposite. Like the more he eats, the the better it gets. Okay. So, in other words, I get used to the more to that bad smell or bad taste as I go along okay is that the opposite it's a question of temperament and look at this of character nothing you can do about it no use struggling one is what one is no use struggling the essential does not change okay um this is superficially a conversation or an exchange that has very little meaning but in fact it's very um, relevant to the overall idea of the play like um, when they are saying that nothing you can do about it they are expressing a certain view about human nature like you have an essential nature and that nature does not change like it is born with you and uh, it dies with you okay there's nothing you um, can do about it there's nothing you can um, change about it okay um, and, and this is also the same idea one is what one is okay so this kind of your nature it's not your action so um and because nature is something essential and because nature is something that is born with us there's no way to change it okay so um this is a view that's called the essential to view and it is in contrast to um another idea or another philosophy that is very much um dominant in the middle of the 20th century which is the existentialist philosophy and the existentialist philosophy is very different from that and um instead of um saying that um nothing you can do about it the existentialists think that um your destiny and your nature is not something given it's not something essential it's not something that is born with you but rather something that you create by the actions that you 
that you do. Okay, so um, instead of saying one is what one is, rather the essentialist think that one is what one does. So um, do you see the, the idea that Vladimir and Asmagan are expressing? The, the essential does not change. This is kind of the essentialism that, that um, they are expressing. And um, later on, we are going to see how relevant this exchange is to the um, overall meaning of the play. Okay, so um, uh, at this point of the play, we have another, uh, we have an important interruption happening. While um, Vladimir and Sragan are um, speaking with each other, um, two other characters enter the stage. And strangely enough, we have um, two characters that are too strange, and they are no less strange like, uh, than um, Vladimir and Sragan. And they are lucky and also. And uh, we have Pozo, who is a master, and he is kind of um, dominating and enslaving Lucky. So um, the first one who enters the stage is Lucky, and he arrives to like um, halfway on the stage, and he is he has a rope that is um, tied to his neck, and on the other side of the rope we have um, Pozo touching the rope. Um, Lucky was um, carrying bags. And he, he has a heart, and Pozo um, is carrying the um, the uh, is, is catching the rope as we saw, and he is also like kind of um, controlling the movements of Lucky through the rope. So when he wants Lucky to move, he kind of moves the rope in a certain way, and he want, when he wants Lucky to stop, he holds the rope in a certain way. Okay, so um, he was saying to um, Lucky stop, okay, and um, okay, um, so you see pause off, it means off stage, he did not enter yet, okay, so on and crack of whip, he, he has a whip also in addition to the rope. Pose appears, um, they cross the stage, and then they appear from one side of the stage to the um, next. Lucky passes before Vladimir Asragan and exit. Pozo, at the side of Vladimir Asragan, stops short, the rope um, tatters. Um, Pozo jerks at it violently and back, noise of Lucky falling with all his leg baggage. So um, when he pulls the rope, Lucky falls down okay, with all the baggage that he is carrying. Vladimir Asragan turned um, towards him, half wishing, half fearing to go to his assistance. So they want to go to the assistance of Lucky, but they are afraid. Vladimir takes a step towards Lucky. Asragan holds him back by the um, sleeve. Let me go. Stay where you are, Asragan. No, like, um, it is Asragan who is kind of um, behaving rationally. He says to him, just do not interfere. Okay, Pozo, be careful. He is wicked. Okay, with strangers. And um, Pozo um, utters the first sentence to him in the play, and he is warning um, Lucky and, and uh, sorry, he is warning uh, Vladimir Asragan of going to the help of um, Lucky. Okay, is that him who uh, got it? Yes, um, I present myself, Pozo. So you see that when they see Pozo, they mistake him for um, Godot. Okay, so which means that they did not meet Godot before. Previously, they were saying that um, they have met Godot and so on, but now this situation falsifies what they have said before. Like if they have met Godot, they should be able to recognize him, but now they do not recognize him, and as a result, they mistake him for they mistake um, Pozo for. Um, for Godot, okay. Well, and Pozo kind of uh, shatters this um, doubt. He says to, to them, I am Pozo, okay. Um, Vladimir, not at all. He said, Godot, not at all. He didn't say, Isragan, you are not Mr. Godot, sir. He's asking him, I am Pozo, okay. Does that mean, um, I say, does that name mean uh, nothing to you? Okay, Pozo, and they kind of trying to um, pronounce the name Pozo, everyone of them is trying his hand in that. Okay, let me see. Is it po Pozo or Pozo? Okay, um, Esragan Pozo, no, I'm afraid, no. I see Vladimir, I once knew a family called Gozo, the mother had the club. 
but not from this parcel. You are human beings, nonetheless. Okay, so you see that, that even with the name, they create a problem. Even with a name, they have a kind of different views. They make a debate about a name, about how to pronounce a name, like about the character, about the booths, about anything. So these are the things that we uh, might otherwise consider to be um, too trivial to um, spark a conversation. They are very much indulged in that, okay? So um, he says to them, you are human beings, okay? As far as one can see, okay? So I can see that you are human beings of the same species as myself. You see, um, when he starts speaking, you see the kind of arrogance that kind of um, smells out from him. Oh, the same species as Pozo made in God's image. and. Um, this sentence made in God's, in God's image is, is a biblical sentence which speaks about man, about Adam, like I'm created, um, I think the verse goes something like that, I created man or him in my own image, okay, well you see who is God up now, um, uh, Pozo gets curious to know about um, this person whom they call um, God up, okay, God up, you took me for God up, you mistook me for for. Um, God, Vladimir, or no, sir, not not for an instant, sir. Who is he? And you see, he's kind of flying. They really took Pozo for God, okay. Um, and Vladimir says he's a kind of acquaintance, and uh, you see, Sragan, none of that kind. We hardly know him. So, uh, Vladimir is, is lying that God is a kind of acquaintance, which he is not, of course, okay. If he were a an acquaintance, um, they would have recognized him. So, Sragan is kind of. Um, more naive, and he's one who is more truthful like, um, than, than um, Vladimir. Nothing, we do not know him, he says. Uh, and Vladimir, true, we don't know him very well, but all the same, I wouldn't even um, know him if I saw him. So you see that uh, the kind of um, uncertainty that um, kind of um, clouds everything they are saying in the play. Like, um, previously, they were saying that they were meeting Godot, and now they are saying that, um, especially Estragon, we said, uh, was saying that um, I wouldn't even know him when I when I see him. Okay, and always when we want the truth, we should be um, listening to Estragon rather than Vladimir. Um, but Pozo kind of insists you missed, you took me for him. Okay, that's to say you understand the dusk and the strain waiting. I confess, I imagined. For a second, and you see that um, how disintegrated his sentence is. Like um, it's not a sentence; it's kind of a bunch of of words, and uh, we don't even understand um, the relevance of each word to um, the question that is um, being asked. Okay, so waiting. So you were waiting for him. Well, you see here on my land. Okay, uh, we didn't intend any harm. Okay, so um, he's claiming that um, they are waiting on his own land, okay, and, and this is kind of very arrogant, okay, and they kind of deny that they intended any harm. We meant well, uh, the road is free to all, that's how we looked at it, and this is the default case. So disgrace, but there you are, nothing we can do about it, and this is kind of a repetition of what were they saying a moment ago that there's nothing you can do about it, okay? And uh, you remember at the beginning of the play, they were saying that nothing to be done, okay? So uh, Pozo like uh, makes a gesture and let's say no more about it. Up, pig, uh, he's speaking to Lucky. Um, and uh, there is a pause every time he drops, he falls asleep. You remember when Lucky like um, entered and Pozo pulled in the um, rope, he fell down and um, it seems as Soon as he falls down, he um, he he um, he is asleep. Um, so he's kind of waking up from him. Okay, and so he jerks the rope up, dog. Okay, and uh, noise of Lucky getting up and picking up his baggage. Uh, Pozo jerks the rope back, and Lucky enters um, uh, backwards. Okay, so you see um, how he's treating him just like an animal. Um, verbally and non-verbally you see that he's just like um giving him um orders and uses a rope which is only used for animals and also verbally you see the kind of words that he's using um pig and dog and there are many other words that you are going to um come across later okay so um 
and you see enter lucky backwards because you remember the um, rope was um, long uh, as, as a half of the um, stage long. Okay, so uh, you remember it was lucky who entered first and Pozo was off stage. And then when Pozo entered and Pozo um, arrived to the uh, mid stage, um, lucky was already uh, off stage from the um, other side. So uh, lucky is now not seen when he, when he falls down. That's why you see enter lucky backwards. So he re enters the um, stage again, but he is not coming um, face down, but rather he's, he's coming um, backward. Okay, gentlemen, I'm happy to have met you. Okay, yes, sincerely happy and jerks the rope. Okay, um, closer, he's, he's, he's bringing uh, Lucky um, closer and Lucky advances stop and Lucky stops. Yes, the road seems long when one journeys all alone. Um, okay, yes, um, and and he can, consults his watch. He has a watch. He, he tries to see the time. Yes, and he calculates. Yes, six hours. That's right. Six hours on end and never a soul in, uh, in sight. Okay, so um, he is like counting the um, distance that he was walking or the distance to his um, destination it was um, six hours. Lucky. Okay, um, coat and Lucky puts down the bag, advances, gives the coat, gets back to his place, takes uh, up the bag. So um, every time Pozo wants something, um, he just needs to utter the word. Lucky is going to put down the um, baggage that he is carrying, goes to um, Pozo, gives him the thing that he wants to take, and then goes back to his exact position and carries the bags again. It's kind of robotic movements, like he's more of a robot than a, um, a human being, okay, or he's more like a trained animal, okay, um, for doing certain tasks, okay, and, and this is not what a human being is, is like, okay. Okay, so um, he goes on and, and he also asks him for uh, for the whip and Lucky advances those and poses notches the whip from his mouth. Lucky goes back to his uh, place. Also, he gives him the whip uh, with which he might be um, beating him. Okay. Um, yes, gentlemen, I cannot go for long without the society of my likes. Okay. Even when the likeness is an imperfect one. Okay. So you see this kind of arrogance, like. Um, the society of my life, like the society of human beings, okay, and uh, it seems he feels alone because he does not consider Lucky to be a human being, so he does not consider himself when he's with the companion of Lucky, he does not consider himself to be in the society of people who are like him, and even with Vladimir Astrogan, although he considers them to be human beings, but, and to be like him in some way, but still he thinks that the likeness is an imperfect one. Like, he is trying to say to them, although you are human beings, yet you are not perfect human beings. You are not the um, prototypical human beings. And he is making himself the measure, the standard for a, what a human being is, is like. Okay, so um, you see this kind of person that um, Pozo is, okay. So um, he goes on to speak just like that, okay, and he's um, asking Lucky to um, to do many uh, tasks, and Lucky just do them in a um, robotic manner. Okay, so um, then uh, you you um, see that uh, Pozo is asking Lucky to bring in the um, chicken that they have, okay, and he was um, eating it and throwing the um, bones, and uh, Lucky was like um, carrying the bones and so on, okay. Well, and you see Lucky um, sank slowly and pulled back and the basket touched the ground and um, straightens up with a start and begins to um, sag again. A rhythm of one uh, um, sleeping on his um, feet. So you see that um, the important thing, the important way here is the rhythm, like this kind of repetition and that uh, we saw um, already with Vladimir and Stragan and now we are seeing again with um, Pozo and Lucky and this is what um, gives the play one of its most um, characteristic features, this idea of repetition, this idea of a rhythm that is going on and on and on and interrupted, okay? Uh, and this is also related, as we are going to see, to the 
themes of time and to the themes of waiting. Okay, so this organ and Vladimir are, are watching, um, are watching um, um, Lucky, and they try to understand what is going on here in this situation. Okay, so um, what ails him, Mr. Regan is, is asking, he looked tired, okay, there is some, some pain in him, okay, that, that's why um, they are asking that, why doesn't he put down his bags, this is a um, rational um, question, okay, how do I know, okay, um, say something to him, look, what, okay, his neck, I see something here, okay, oh, I say, a running sewer. Okay, so you see that even they look at the neck of Lucky and because there is a rope, the neck maybe is reddened. And so they are still puzzled. Why Why is he doing the thing that he that he does? Okay, and what um, like forces him to behave in, in, in such um, slavish way towards um, Pozo? Okay, so it's the rope, it's the reddening, it's inevitable, it's the knot, it's the chafing and you see this kind of interesting um style in their dialogue okay is not bad looking what would you say a trifle of an it look at this lover sniftable look at this labor okay perhaps it is um half with curtain look like a guitar it's not certain he's panting it's inevitable okay and you remember you see how many times Isragan um utters the word inevitable and his eyes what about him goggling out his head looks at his last gasp to me ask him a question they try to communicate with lucky and communication is is another problem in the play okay but they are afraid to talk to him they are afraid to um speak to him they are afraid to ask him okay um what that would you go think what do you uh risk mr uh, sragan is asking louder mr leave him in peace okay can't you see he wants to rest but and he says basket and um uh, lucky goes and uh, gives him the basket and then um uh, goes back to his place again and then um uh, pozo takes something of the um basket okay and uh, says basket again and then lucky comes in and uh he he takes it uh away okay um it's it's not his job okay that's all better uh Pozo says please sir what is it my good man um have you finished with the you don't need for the bone sir you see um this is one of the funny moments of Estragon. like um he is asking uh after um Pozo has finished eating the chicken. Uh, Isragan is asking him for the bones if he wants to keep the bones. So uh, Isragan wants the bones as, as we see, okay. Uh, uh, you couldn't have waited, Vladimir is, is angry with him, okay. Yes, no, he does well to ask, do I need the bones? No, personally, I don't need them anymore. But in theory, the bones go to the courier. He's the fourth one to ask, go on, don't be afraid, ask him, he will tell you. So um, Pozo is saying to them, no, I don't need the bones, but rather the bones belong to the courier who is lucky in this case. And so go and ask him if he wants the bones. Okay, if he does not, maybe he would be, agree to give you um, the bones. Okay, now Mr. Ragan is Mr. Excuse me, he's trying to um, speak to Lucky, but Lucky does not answer. And Pozo is saying to him, you are being spoken to pig. Reply. Okay, so he's like chiding lucky for not replying to the question or to the um speech of estragon excuse me the bones you don't be wanting the bones okay mr reply okay and, and he says to him mr and are, are you telling him mr he's he's an animal how, how do you tell him or say to him mr reply do you want them or you don't they are yours i don't like it, I've never known him to refuse a bone before. Uh, nice business would be if he fell sick on me. Okay, and he throws up the um, pipe, the pipe that he's carrying. It's a scandal. Pozo, are you alluding to anything in particular when, when you are saying a scandal? Okay, um, to treat a man like that, I think that no, a human being, no, is a scandal. So, um, Vladimir is making a moral point, like he's a human being. How do you treat him like that? So it's a scandal to treat a human being like that. And, and Isragan agrees, it's just a disgrace. Okay, Pozo becomes angry. Okay, you are severe. Um, like you are judging me. Okay.
okay you you consider me to be scum to be scandalous you you consider me to be like um um like you consider like um that that's to say um consider me to be scandalous to be disgraceful and so on you're severe you do not understand the situation he's saying what age are you it's not a rude question 60 70 okay what age would you say he was um 11 and this is like um this is one of the things that makes us uncertain about everything that these two characters are saying so one's age one of their age cannot be 11 anyway Okay, I'm um, pertinent. Thank you for your society. Unless I um, smoke uh, another pipe before I go, so it seems he is like um, uh, preparing to go. Okay, um, and, and he is like I'm um, offering them to um, smoke with him with his pipe and so on. I uh, that's better. Let's go so soon. One moment. Okay, um, stool. He is asking Lucky to bring the stool uh, more there. Okay, let's go. Vladimir is saying, I hope I'm not driving you away. Wait a little longer. You'll never regret it. We are in no hurry. Okay, so um, the second is um, never so sweet as the first time in. Okay, so but sweet, just um, the same. I'm going. Um, so Vladimir becomes angry with um, Pozza and he says that he's going, he wants to leave. Okay, and this again sees that there is no urgency to leave at this point okay he can no longer endure endure my presence uh, he's speaking about vladimir i am perhaps not particularly human but who cares think twice before you do anything rush suppose you go now while it's still day but there's no denying of it is still day and he looks at the sky okay so as if he needs like a proof in order to to see whether it is still day or not and um, what happens okay in that case, I'm out. Okay. In that case, in that case, what happens to that case of your appointment with this Godot? Okay, Gordon. Okay, anywhere. So, um, as Vladimir is saying that we have to go, or I want to go, and Pozo is raising a certain point. So, like, um, if you go now, and maybe the person whom you are waiting, who is Godot. Maybe he's coming after that. Okay, so it could be a disappointment for you and for him. Okay, so uh, who told you we are waiting for God? Okay, so uh, anyone, one who I mean, who has your future in his heart. Okay, I, at least your immediate future. And, and this is um, a significant phrase. Like, um, do you remember when he, when they asked if they are tied to God or not? Like, um, yes, they have no freedom. Maybe because God has got their future in his hands okay i told you he speaks to me again if that goes that will be all the friends okay why doesn't he put down his bags okay so um now Sergan is asking a question about lucky why doesn't he put down um his bags and as we saw this is quite a reasonable question because he's a human being and human beings don't um uh, behave just like that okay well, um, I too would be happy to meet him, um, to meet God. And um, you see here, um, we have another example where um, one character asks a question and the other character does not bother to answer that question, but rather uh, Pozo just goes on and on with his um, um, speech as if the um, question of Estragon was not uttered in the first place. Okay, the more people I meet, the more happy I become. Okay, so the happier I become from the uh, nearest creature, uh, the far wiser, richer, more conscious, okay, um, of one's blessing. Even you, even you who knows, will have added to my store. Okay, so he says to them, I like, like the uh, meeting of human beings because they add something to me, they enrich me, even you, okay? You see how condescending he is, like um, he still does not consider them to be um, fully human beings, like when he says to them, even you, although you are not perfect human beings, even you, uh, you might have added something to me, okay? And this Ragan does not pay attention to the speech of Pozo, but rather he is still thinking of the same idea. He's still raising the same question. Why doesn't he put down his uh, bags? But that would surprise me. Okay, so you see the answer of Pozo um, has nothing to do with the question of Estragon. Rather, it is 
just a continuation of a speech. You are being asked a question. Vladimir insists that you have to, to answer the question. Pose the question, who, what? A moment ago you were calling me sir and fear trembling and now you are asking me questions. No good will come of this. I think he is listening what um, they are speaking about. Um, Pozo, you can ask him, he is on the alert. Now he is paying attention that you can ask him now. He doesn't put, why does he does not put down his bags? He returned to the same, I, uh, I wonder, ask him. Okay, um, and now Pozo um, like pays attention to their question. And he says to them, you want to know why he doesn't put down his bags as you call them. That's it. You are sure you agree with that? He's pulling like grumps. Okay, the answer to this, but stay still, I beg of you, you are making me nervous. Okay, so he still, you see, did not answer the question. Um, <coughs> what is it? He's about to speak, Vladimir says, okay, and Pozo speaks. Good, is everything, if everybody ready, is everybody looking at me? Will you look at me, pig? Okay, good. Um, I am ready. Is everybody listening? Is everybody ready? Okay, so um, he could have just spoken the answer without making all this like show, but um, he is very theatrical. But um, he, when he wants to speak, he wants everybody to be listening to him. Like um, it's kind of self-consciously theatrical. Like he considers himself to be uh, an actor on stage, and like um, when he wants to um, speak the audience should be paying attention to him. Like now the audience on stage are not us, are not the people are watching the play in a theater, but rather it is Vladimir, Ersergan, and Lucky. So these are his audience. When he wants to speak, he wants them to be all careful and listening to what he is saying. I'm going, Ersergan. What was exactly you wanted to know why he, oh, don't interrupt me, okay? If you speak at once, you will never get anyone. So. Um, kind of he is behaving or he's acting as if he were an actor on a stage okay and this is quite ironic and quite meta theatrical you remember um, the term that we used before with um othello if you um remember that meta theater okay but why always hold um why Okay, so um, Pozo, ah, why couldn't you say so before? He doesn't make himself comfortable. Let's try and get this clear. He has not, the, has he not the right to? Certainly he, ha he has. It follows that he does not want to. There is something, so there is reasoning for you. And why doesn't he want to? Gentlemen, the reason is this. Make a note of it, Badmer says, okay. He wants to impress me so that I will keep him. And this is um, the answer that uh, he was, procrastinating on giving to Esfagan and Vladimir, okay? So he's saying basically that um, Lucky does not put down his bags because he wants to impress me, okay? But, and, and what? They cannot, this is kind of not a reasonable answer to them. Um, and Pozo saying, perhaps uh, I haven't um, got it quite right. He wants to m mollify me so that I'll give up the idea of parting with him no, that's not exactly it either. You want to get rid of him? Now, um, another question is raised. So, um, seems that Pozo has a plan in his agenda that he is going to get rid of ready, uh, of, of Lucky. And because Lucky um, doesn't want to uh, depart from Pozo because he wants to um, stay with Pozo, he wants to convince Pozo that he's a good slave and that is a good idea to keep him, not to get rid of him. Okay, so he's doing everything, everything he can, uh, no matter how non-human that thing might be, just to convince Pozo that it's not a, a good idea to um, be getting rid of that good slave that Lucky is. Okay, so... Um, uh, he wants to call me, but he won't. He won't. He, and, and you see, Vladimir is there, kind of repeating these questions. Okay, and you see, Pozo doesn't pay attention to their questions, and he goes on with his own sentences. He imagines that when I see how well he carries, I'll be tempted to keep him on that capacity. On in that capacity, you have 
had enough of him, as Ragan is saying. You did enough to him, okay? And reality killer is like a pig. It's not his job, okay? You want to get rid of him. They repeat the same question. He imagines that when I see him indefatigable, okay, I'll regret my decision, such as his miserable scheme, as though I were short of slaves. Well, that's that, I think. Anything else? And they just um, repeat that. You want to get rid of him? Okay, and pause our remark that I might just as well have been in his shoes and he in mine if chance had not willed otherwise to each one his due. Um, this is an important sentence and this is related back to um, the idea of the two thieves. And um, the idea of the two thieves is mainly about the idea of chance, like um, the result of being saved or being damned. Um, according to the story of the two thieves, is not based on your actions. Like, um, we expect that um, our results, our destinies um, are based on our actions. But in fact, they are not, okay, according to the story. Like, um, just in the last moment, both of the thieves were down, but in the last moment, something happened, and one of the thieves was saved, and the other was damned by chance. So um, here he is saying quite the same thing, like, and now I'm the master and I'm lucky as the slave. It could have been otherwise. It's just a matter of chance. Like and now that I'm the master and he is the slave. So um, things are not based on rational um, reasons why something is the way it is. But rather it is all based on, on chance. It's kind of random, it's chaotic. It's like not based on on certain reasons, but rather it's just um, random. Everything could have been otherwise, but it happens just to be the way it is now. Okay, so um, there is a kind of continuity now um, when um, we saw the um, story of the two thieves and now uh, with the idea of chance and so on. Okay, so um, uh, Posa goes on, okay, you want to get rid of him, and now he says, I do. And now you, you see that it was like of uh, not answering their question and he keeps them asking the question until he at last answers the question i do but instead of driving him away as i might have done okay so he says that i could have just kicked him away like getting rid of him by kicking him away but um because i'm soft-hearted and because i'm merciful so i'm getting him to the fair and i'm going to sell him to get some money out of that okay so um, seems that the destination of Pozo is to the uh, fur, okay? So um, he's crying, all dogs have more dignity. Um, uh, and, and Lucky is crying. And you see the um, stage directions, uh, Lucky weeps, okay? And he is crying, okay? So um seems that um, when he heard what, uh, when he heard Pozo speaking about getting rid of him or going to the market and selling him, he started to cry. Okay, so all dogs have more dignity. Okay, comfort him since you pity him. Come on. Okay, Sragan so takes the handkerchief and he gives them a handkerchief. Wipe away his tears. Uh, he will uh, feel uh, less um, forsaken. Okay, so um, here, give it to him. I'll do it. Okay, so um, uh, Posa gives a hand handkerchief to Sragan uh, and says to him, uh, go and, and uh, wipe his, his tears. Uh, Vladimir is more careful and saying to Estragon, just throw it to him, don't give it to him by hand. Uh, Estragon does not listen to that, okay, and he goes on. Um, Lucky kind of um, kicks Estragon by, by the leg, okay, so um, it, uh, Estragon, oh, the swine, okay, uh, he, he has crippled me, okay, so um, seems it is very painful, the, um, the um, kick that Lucky gave to Estragon, okay? So I told you he didn't like strangers, like I, I warned you before, okay? Show me, okay? Um, he's bleeding, he's saying to, 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 uh, to Pozo. Estragon is now bleeding, it's a good sign. I'll never walk again, um, Estragon is saying, okay? I'll carry you if necessary. So it's like just no problem, even if you are crippled, I'm going to um, carry you. Okay, um, Pozo is saying he stopped crying. You have replaced him as it were. Okay, the tears of the world are a constant quantity for each one who begins to weep somewhere else. Uh, another um, stops. The same is true of the laugh and so on. Okay, um, try and walk. Vladimir is speaking to um, Estragon. 
Okay, so um, he is trying to, to encourage Estragon to uh, to walk again after um, he was kicked by Ampozo, uh, by sorry, by Lucky. Ampozo says, "Goes, uh, sorry, guess who taught me all these beautiful things? My Lucky." Okay, so will night never come? Uh, well, um, Vladimir is asking, and Vladimir is is asking about the night because he wants the night to come because um, the um, appointment with Godot was at the night, so that's why he is kind of um, rushing and for, for the night to come, okay, so, but for him all my thoughts or my feelings would have been of common things, professional worries, beauty, grace, truth, or the first author, I knew they were all the beyond, so I took a note, so, um, Pozo is telling us something interesting, surprising about Lucky. So he says to them, I, I knew all my ideas from Lucky. That seems Lucky was like a kind of a poet or a philosopher. And Pozo says that, that he taught me too many things and um, these things, beauty, grace, truth, and so on, he he, uh, he learned from uh, from Lucky. Okay, so it's quite a, um, a, a remarkable thing that their history. We do not know what Lucky was in the past, and we do not know what Pozo was in the past, and why their relations, their relationship has changed the way it did. Okay, well, um, so Pozo goes on, and you see that Vladimir is going to concerned about something, and Pozo is speaking about a completely different thing. He's quite not listening to them. Okay, so Vladimir, and now you turn him away. He's such an old and faithful servant. Okay, so um, Vladimir is again blaming Pozo. He says to him, if you say that he's a good servant, and if you say that he taught you too many things, so and now you are you want to to get rid of him. Uh, this is quite quite bad of you. Okay, so Vladimir is kind of sympathetic with um, Lucky, but Estragon is a swine. He's Pig, speaking about Lucky, um, Estragon is not sympathetic with Lucky because Lucky has kicked him. Now his um, leg is in pain because of of um, because of of Lucky. Okay, Amposa kind of defends himself. Okay, I cannot bear it any longer. Okay, so um, Vladimir is saying after having sucked all the good out of him, you chuck him away like a like a banana skin. Really. Okay, um, this might remind us of like um, um, Woody Loman when he says to Howard, you remember you cannot eat um, the fruit and, and, and throw the peel away. Okay, so um, now um, Vladimir is saying to Pozo, you kind of sucked everything of him, like you have eaten him now and you are throwing him just like a banana banana skin, okay, uh, with um, Estragon, sorry, um, Woody Loman was speaking about orange and now um, Vladimir is speaking about banana, but it's quite the um, same meaning. So, Pozo is trying to defend himself. I can't bear it any longer. The way he goes on, you have no idea. It's terrible. He must go. Okay. Um, I'm going mad. I can't bear it any longer. Okay. So, um, he, he says, it's like, don't blame me. Um, Lucky is driving me mad. Okay. And you see, um, the um, reaction of Vladimir on, on this reckon. he cannot bear it any longer, he's going mad, it's terrible. Okay, um, well, so you see they are just repeating what, what uh, Porzo was saying, okay, and Vladimir returns to uh, to Lucky, how dare you, so noble, abominable, such a good master, crucify him like that after so many years, really? And you see them, um, they started, Vladimir started blaming Pozo, but after Pozo said these things, now they are blaming Lucky for like I'm um, crucifying Pozo, and this is quite an um, unreasonable um, position to take for them. Okay, he used to be so kind, so helpful, so entertaining. My good angel, now he's killing me. Does he want to replace him? Okay, what? Does he want someone to take his place or not? I don't think so. What? I don't know. Ask him, gentlemen. I don't know what come uh, over me, forgive me, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but you may be sure there wasn't a word of truth in it, don't, uh, uh, do I look like a man that can be made to suffer, frankly, what have I done with my uh, pipe, okay, I'm charming evening we are having, forgettable, it's not over, apparently not, so you see that uh, 
like um, Buzo speaking about something, they tend to speak about something else. They speak about um, the evening, okay? And it's quite confusing because um, just a moment ago, Vladimir was saying, well, evening, will night never come, okay? So, and now they are saying that it is evening, okay? So, um, another interesting thing, and this is the last thing that we are going to mention in this video before um, we wrap things up. Um, the question of Estragon, which is quite um, funny, does he want to replace him? So, uh, when Posa said that uh, Lucky is, is becoming a bad slave and that he's crucifying him, that he's killing him and so on, Estragon was asking him, do you want to replace him? Like, Estragon was offering himself to be a slave instead of Lucky. And, and this is quite not understandable. And, yeah, well, even Vladimir does not comprehend that. Like, what are you saying? Okay. Um, so, um, you see how um, Estragon is thinking, like, um, you see, he was, when, when Pozo was eating the um, chicken throwing the bones away. Um, Estragon was very uh, much humiliating himself by asking for the bones, and now he's asking if he, if Pozza wants to replace him. So even Estragon like is ready to be um, to be a slave. Okay. So and and the um, behavior of Lucky and also Estragon now for that sake is reminiscent of the idea of freedom. Like um, some people for them like. Uh, freedom might be, uh, we always think of freedom to be a good thing, but for some people it might be uh, not good, okay? So that's why they they are looking for a master to dominate them. Like, um, like we are expecting Lucky to be happy that Pozo is going to get rid of him. He might like be um, liberated, being free from his master, being no, uh, a slave no more, okay? But and instead of that, instead of being happy, he weeps, he's crying. Okay, now Estragon, who is um, basically a free man, he wants to um, replace Lucky and be <coughs> and become the um, slave for um, Pozo. Okay, so um, these are the points that uh, I wanted to um, shed light on for the uh, moment. Okay, and then this is our, as I said, um, second video for the analysis of Waiting for Godot. Um, try to um, um, connect um, the ideas that you are learning about existentialism. Try to see the relevance of these ideas to um, text, to the points that have been raised in the text of the play. And thank you very much. And we are going to um, discuss all these things in the uh, lecture, in the um, Zoom lecture. So until then, have a good time.